Okay, if you saw my impressions video, then you know that with the A54, the only thing I wanted to know was, is the Exynos 1380 any good? Is the performance on the A54 great? Yes. Yes, it is. I think that's the short answer. I'm done, I guess. Unless you want to know the long answer. Ah, you've heard this a million times. Samsung is trying to unify the designs across the whole lineup, making all of their phones look just like their flagships. But I think this one in particular is exceptionally close. It looks just like the S23 with those three camera rings and that glass back. Unfortunately, it's a glossy finish and not matte like the S23, so it does pick up a lot of fingerprint marks. Wait, 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 I've been waiting to say this. It picks up more fingerprints than the CSI detective of the month. Or is it CSI agent? Well, you get the point. You're going to have to keep wiping and cleaning for it to stay pretty. And for the ladies, it doubles as a mirror. Okay, but for real, I think design is a win. Because when holding this, you feel good. The glass back adds that bit of a premium touch to it. The sides are slightly curved, so it's super comfortable to hold. And I think it looks overall pretty nice. It's also a very solid phone. Sturdy, no creaking or flexing. It's got Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the screen, also on the back glass. It's got an IP67 rating for dust and water resistance. I believe that's up to one meter for 30 minutes. Of course, you want to be careful with your phone and not drop it in water, but accidents happen. So it's nice to know you're covered. The buttons are also great, very clicky. You notice that the power button is the regular type and that's cause the fingerprint sensor is underneath the display, just like with the A53. It's not ultrasonic, but optical. Again, just like last year. So it's not the fastest when it comes to unlocking speed, but it does work about 99% of the time. So that's great. Now, before we move on to display, I do want to point out that this has two speakers. Most of the sound comes from the bottom speaker and the rest from the ear slit. It's pretty loud. One more thing to note is that this comes with a hybrid SIM tray. You have to choose between having two SIM cards or one SIM card and a micro SD card. Design is very solid. Maybe I don't like the glossy finish, but overall, it's pretty good. Nine out of 10. This is not so different from last year's phone. It's a bit smaller than last year at 6.4 inches. And as crazy as this might sound, this phone feels compact. The bezels though have been increased. And I'll be honest, for like the first two days, I complained about it. But just like the notch on the iPhone, the more you use it, the less you notice it. So you do get used to it pretty quickly. But aside the slightly smaller size and the chunkier bezels, it's the same Super AMOLED 120Hz display. It's sharp, detailed, supports HDR10+, it's smooth, fluid, everything works as it should. I mean, Samsung makes the best displays, so nothing really surprising here. It's just as good as the A53, but it's brighter now, maxing out at 1000 nits of brightness, so slightly more visible outdoors. Display is also very solid. I mean, if you hand this phone over to someone, when they look at it for the first time, they would go, wow, that's a nice looking display. And I would agree, but I would still complain about the chunkier bezels. Why? Oh, and like I mentioned earlier, it is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. Still doesn't mean you should drop your phone, cause glass is glass. But in the event that it does drop, well, the Galaxy A54 and A34 are now part of the devices covered by Samsung Care Plus. And that means just like their flagships, you would actually get a heavy discount when repairing these phones. What's there to say really? It's running on Android 13 and One UI 5.1. And Samsung is still promising four years of major Android updates. So that's up to Android 17, which is definitely one of the reasons to buy this phone. I did notice that this phone came pre-installed with a couple apps, Netflix and Spotify in particular. They also kind of force you to download some recommended apps, but those can also be uninstalled. And Samsung did tell me that if you get the A54 and I think A34, you do get three months of free Spotify and two months of YouTube premium. I'm not sure if this is like a global thing or just for Africa, but I think it's pretty dope. 
Like I said earlier, this is running One UI 5.1, and we know what we get with One UI. It's super customizable. I think they just added some new lock screen customization features as well. You can edit the format of the clock widget on the lock screen, the font style, the color of the font, what's on the lock screen. It's kind of similar to what we had on iOS 16 with the iPhones, but it's still cool to see. But my absolute favorite feature has to be Material U. If you watch my videos a lot, you hear me complain when a phone doesn't have this. Like the ability to match your entire phone's UI and icons to your wallpaper, I think is really cool. But as far as bugs go, so far I haven't noticed anything major with this one. I think I've gotten one software update since I got this. It's been very good. It does feel like Exynos has been properly optimized this time. And I guess, fingers crossed, it stays this way. This is probably what everyone wants to know about. How is the performance? Well, like I said in the intro, it's great. It works just as it should. On paper, it's actually better than the Exynos 1280. Better CPU and GPU performance. And the good news is it's not just on paper. In the real world too. It's smoother, more fluid, apps open quicker. There are no stutters or fidgeting. It works like it should. And that's the thing that most people care about. They want a phone that works as it should. Now, as far as gaming goes, I might not be the best one to answer this question. How good is the gaming? But I have heard from fellow creators who game a lot with the A54 and they tell me it works great. I also did my own little gaming test. I played FIFA Mobile for a couple hours and yeah, it didn't like overheat or anything. They also tell me that you can comfortably play games at medium to high graphic settings and you wouldn't encounter frame drops or freezing or any of that. Performance is really good. My unit comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. There's also an option of virtual RAM and by default mine was set to 4 gigabytes but it does go up to 8 gigabytes. The Exynos 1380 is also 5G enabled, which depending on where you live would mean faster download speeds, you know, no buffering when streaming, all that stuff. But I'm just glad to report that with the A54, performance is finally as it should be. No question, definitely one of the best options out there for this price point. They took out the depth sensor, but I don't think it would be missed. So we've got a triple camera setup here, a main camera, which technically did get a downgrade to 50 megapixels. Then we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and a five megapixel macro sensor, which I thought was going to be not good, but turns out it's actually decent. The main camera is expected to take very good pictures. We do get the typical Samsung look though. Great dynamic range, but with really blue skies. Colors also really pop, even more than in real life. It also looks sharp and detailed, sometimes a little too sharp. Overall though, the images look really nice. It's a look that clearly people really like. The ultra wide also looks nice. It does pretty well to match the colors of the main camera, but I would say I was more impressed with night mode and the macro sensor most especially night mode. The front facing camera is decently sharp too, handles dynamic range well, and overall pretty solid. And then for video, it shoots up to 4K 30 frames per second. It does have three mics, one at the top and two at the bottom. And this is what the front facing camera looks like. It shoots up to 4K 30 frames per second. This also serves as an audio test as there are three mics, like I mentioned earlier. There's a little bit of noise, so how does it handle that? I think it's handling dynamic range really well as well. So, you know, let me know what the video quality and the audio quality sounds like in the comment section down below. My skin is trash though. Just like the selfie camera, the rear camera also shoots in 4K 30 frames per second. Autofocus, HDR, stabilization, detail are all pretty good on here. I'm impressed with the quality you can get out of this, but I do want to hear your own thoughts down in the comments. Battery life was pretty good on the A53, and that is the same case with the A54. A 5000 mAh cell combined with a 5 nanometer processor means all day battery life, typically. I play FIFA Mobile for an hour and the battery went from 64% to 51%, so about a 13% drop. I also watched a TV show for about an hour, 20 minutes, and it took about 8% of the battery. So it does depend on what you're doing on your phone, but I think with medium phone usage, this should easily last you a day. 
It also does support up to 25 watts fast charging, but you do not get the charger in the box. That is sold separately. Overall thoughts, they fixed it. The only major complaint was fixed, so thumbs up. Like I can confidently recommend this phone now. Solid design, solid cameras too, soft and battery life on point, and now great performance. My only ick would be the chunkier bezels and the fact that the charging adapter doesn't come in the box. This particular A54 with 6GB of RAM and 256GB of storage goes for 315,000 Naira or about $400 to $500. And then the base model with 128 gigabytes of storage sells for 294,500 Naira, or about $400 to $450. Here in Nigeria, it's still kind of more on the expensive side, but when you compare this to the A53's price, you definitely can tell that this is better value for money. And Samsung makes it possible for you to pay for this in installments using a new service they're calling FlexPay. I think they go as low as 12,900 naira monthly. So if you do want this phone but can't afford it right away, you can pay in bits. So yeah, that's the long answer. The A54 is actually a really good phone. Not a lot to complain about. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for the A34 review and I'll see you when you see me.